E aí galera, entrevista especial do Invasão. Conferimos o show do Blaze Bailey, ex-Iron Maiden, que rolou em Sorocaba. Mas antes do show, a gente colou lá no hotel e foi lá bater um papo com ele, perguntando um pouco sobre sua carreira solo e também sobre seus novos projetos. First, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my fans in Brazil for the fantastic support. Thank you so much for making this tour possible and thank you for all the support that you've given me on this tour. Obrigado, Brazil. Um, the Silicon Messiah album was my first album after Iron Maiden and I learned a lot when I was in Iron Maiden about the songwriting with Steve Harris and it's the first time I felt I could get the ideas from my head into the recording and uh, I liked the album very much and uh, some of the songs, three or four of the ideas then they were ideas that I wanted to work on with Steve Harris and Dave Murray from Iron Maiden, but I wasn't in the band anymore. So I'm very happy with the album, and for me, it's something very important in my life. And the songs and the lyrics uh, are about technology and different circumstances and, and the way that the dependence that we have on technology may lead us into a very dangerous place and also there is a lot of my own feelings uh, about loneliness and being an outsider is also on the album so it's something I'm very proud of and I managed to get a band together and find really good musicians to work with uh, to record that album and then the next album is called The Tenth Dimension which is a concept album and it is my belief that we are all connected in some deeper way and that there is a psychic energy that some of us are aware of and some of us aren't and I think that one day science will uncover and prove to be true psychic energy and being able to receive messages from the future. I believe that science will do that because quantum physics and the, the way that quantum physics is explained allows that to be possible. So the tenth dimension is a story of a man who discovers psychic power and then he realizes he's working for the government and it's very similar to the Oppenheimer story working on the atomic bomb. He's so crazy about finding the discovery that he forgets it will be harmful to mankind. Very so, very good idea. so, and a lot of my own very deeply held personal beliefs about uh, life and the way that humans interact, the way that we are, are on that album, in that story. And my next album is Blood and Belief. Um, my next studio record and Blood and Belief explores a different area at the time I had a lot of mental health problems I was going through uh, a lot of difficulties in my life and uh, I was taking medication for depression and a, a lot of problems with uh, the bands not going well and, and things like this so Blood and Belief really tells those stories and um, about what I personally what I went through. Um, another couple of songs on there which are uh, more happy and positive. And um, uh, so, uh, and that brings us that that's that era really. Uh, and I did a, an album called As Live As It Gets as well. And then um, after that, then I got a, a completely new band to do my next two albums. For the man who would not die, I had a completely new band, and uh, I found great musicians 
that uh, were experienced in death metal, David Bermudez and Nicholas Bermudez from the band Bond and Threat. Uh, they did a kind of death metal, and musically we had the idea to combine some of the style of death metal with the vocals of bass bay. Uh, singing in my natural way and expressing myself naturally with this really intense style of playing and guitars. And the combination of my style of songwriting and the death metal background that those guys came from worked so well. And we came up with an album called The Man Who Would Not Die. And that is um, an expression in many of the songs about the way I felt I was treated by the music business that a lot of dishonest people, a lot of liars and cheats in the mainstream music business and many people in record companies that don't know anything about music, that don't know anything about bands and why people like rock and metal bands. So I, I felt that and also the record deal that I was in finished and I, I, one of the songs is a true story, it's called Blackmailer and it's about the way that it's been extended on a blackmail into giving them the rights for my albums for the rest of the world instead of just you and so that's a true story and there are many things on there uh, which are about fighting back and being kicked, being down and saying I refuse to be defeated and to come back and it's a very powerful album and for many of my fans that have followed me for a long time it's the number one their favourite album of all my work which is very, very good for me you know, that I made so many studio albums and one further down is a favourite and then after, after that album, then I did an album called Promising Terror with the same band. And um, that is a half of concept, really. Uh, the first half is sequence stories of uh, historical stories and uh, things about true people and about the role of things uh, that people do, people against the establishment. And the second part of it is uh, a really uh, an introspective thing. And the main song you know, is, and the second part is called Comfortable in Darkness. Because at that time in my life, I was going through a lot of uncertainty. My wife had passed away, and uh, I had a lot of terrible problems to, to overcome. And mentally, I wasn't in a good place. So, I kind of expressed that on the album and, uh, and uh, again a lot of my fans like that album as much. Now see, makes me question my beliefs. Does the end justify the means? Is it meant to be? I must now make a step and break out of these walls. underground artist. I'm not a huge artist. I don't sell many CDs around the world. People know me from official Blaze Bailey Facebook and BlazeBailey.net are the two main ways people get in touch with me. And I play small concerts as much as I can because I want to be close to my fans. I want to be, I want to be close. And I sometimes I play a lot of big places and people can be behind a barrier and a lot and then 
if you're in a big place, you can have some problems with security, that don't, don't like music fans, and all of this. And in a bigger place, they take money off you to sell your t-shirts, they take money, they make you pay all of this extra stuff. I'm a small underground artist, and I'm completely independent. The only people that fund me are my fans. The fans that buy my CDs and the tickets to my concerts and my t-shirts, that is why I can go on to it. And it's those people that I want to reach out to. And I try at every concert to meet as many of the fans as I can and sign everything and say personally to everybody, thank you for your support. And well, that is why I, I think Oh, that is why I'm underground. Because in the mainstream, they don't want that. In the mainstream, they want you to appear elusive, distant, enigmatic. Oh, what is it? They want some mystery. They want you on uh, big videos. They don't want you to perform in small places where you might look bad. But for me, if I'm a fan and I'm close to my artist, and I'm here with them, and I can see that they see me with passion for me. That's that's what I want. So so that's why I'm doing it, and I chose to do this tour, which is an acoustic tour, yeah, of, of Brazil, because I wanted to get close to the fans and say a special thank you. And at this time in my life, I feel that my voice is the best. It has ever been. I feel at this point I am singing the best I have ever been. So I wanted to present my voice and record it in an acoustic style. Yeah. Uh, so, so you could be more, you could hear more. something you would buy and they said yes so we've made uh, an EP yeah. called the Russia Holiday and it has soundtrack of my life on it it has a new song Russian Holiday it has a song from the tenth dimension called Steel Time and another couple of songs that we've redone and I'm really really pleased with it and so far a couple of fans that I know have played it on the headphones to them and they've liked it. So it comes out now. Um, you can get it from Blaze And I'm hoping that people will like it. When I get home, I sign every single copy and then I mail it to everybody. Oh. Yeah. As I live, so Thank you. 
thank you Brazil, thank you fans from my heart, thank you for supporting me, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.